Today we're going to be talking about ID photos and how you can take your ID photo yourself. If you're a Swedish person and you want this video in Swedish, you could click the link right up here and I will have a Swedish version for you there. The whole idea of having an ID photo is for somebody else to see that you are actually you. So no messy background, no hats, no sunglasses, no ordinary glasses, and as even light as possible. A very close up picture won't do it, no matter how pretty you are. I've been doing ID photos for years and I've done thousands of them. Since a few years back, I've introduced an online service where a client can take the photo by themselves at home and send it to me and I make an ID photo out of it. Driver's license, passports, whatever it may be. But there are some mistakes that are common and that are regularly repeating themselves. There are exceptions, but for the most uh, majority of countries and uh, facilities where you might want to send your ID photo, it's a plain white background that is your aim. Now, most online services can deal with a certain amount of disruption from this rule. That is a bit of the, the service that we are giving. So if it's not pure white or if there's some structure in it or even there could be some patterns in it, we can usually deal with it. We can get those away. But what you should avoid is just taking a picture with all your stuff in the background like in a living room or you know just having a lot of things back there because that will make it more difficult to separate you from the background so if you want to make uh, our job uh, a little bit easier choose a background that is as plain as possible as light as possible and with not so much patterns if possible we can deal with some of it but uh, just don't make it too difficult for us the second thing would be, you might even not think about it, but it's what you're wearing. If you're wearing something that is really dark, it will also make the job much easier for us to separate you from the background. If you're wearing a white t-shirt or something that is very bright, then the difference between what you are wearing and the background will be very slim. It will still work, but it just makes it more difficult. And actually in some countries and in some instances, they do demand it that there's a separation between your body and the actual background. So preferably something dark with patterns or something like that, that will be uh, clearly separated from the background, which then should be white. So you found your background. It could be a wall that is white. It could be a door. It could be a wardrobe. It could be pretty much anything. Uh, I have seen examples of people holding up a, a bed sheet, a white bed sheet behind them. There's all kinds of sorts of uh, inventions made for this but usually a white wall will do a white door will do and if you don't have anything else most of us will have some sort of white cloth or a white uh, bed sheet uh, that you could just hang up on a on a picture that is hanging on the wall already you just have it over there and have it hanging down and you will have a pretty fair white plain background that will work just fine so next next part of the matter will be you it will be what you should be appearing like. And for most countries and in most instances, you should be using no headwear. There are exceptions from this. Uh, amongst those would be some religious exceptions. But no headwear would be the general rule. So just plain out, have your hair or not hair, whatever it might be. Just leave it as it is. Glasses. Uh, in Sweden, for example, where I live and where I deliver most of my photos, uh, for a driver's license, you are allowed to have them. But if you have any reflections in them when you're taking the picture, like, you know, when I'm doing this, the picture, it won't be granted for a driver's license. So even though you're allowed to have them, and even if you're required to use them while driving, uh, I would recommend that you just take them off for the picture uh, taken. That way there will be no reflections in your glasses and you will be able to see your eyes clearly. Obviously, then no sunglasses. And if you do have glasses that darken in the, in the bright sun, those ones you cannot use. They, if you're gonna wear glasses, they need to be all bright and really transparent. But my advice is to just take them off altogether. So we got the headwear off, we got the sunglasses off, we got the regular glasses off, if I may have it my way. 
The next one would be the distance between you and the actual camera. A general rule is if you see your shoulders on the picture, then it's good. Then there will be a, a picture that could be workable, that will work. If you're too far away, then we will have to crop the image in for a bit and that will in decrease the quality of the picture. And if you're too close, then we will have to uh, come out, zoom out of the picture and it will leave you with parts of your body kind of missing if you're coming in too close because we will just have to add the white frame around it because there will just not be enough of you as, you're, as we're cropping or zooming out of the picture. So if the shoulders are showing, you're probably in a good place. A bit like you're seeing me right here. This will work just perfect. The next step would be the actual picture. Depending on what kind of device you're using to take the picture, it will be a bit different, but I'm just assuming that you know how to take a picture. If you're using a phone, you could use either the front uh, camera or the back camera. The back camera in general has higher quality, but for this particular case, usually the front camera will be just fine. So then I suggest we do this thing and we just uh, have a look around the studio and find a place that would feel all right for us to take this photo in. A note though, when you're using the front camera, I know that it's very tempting to actually be looking at the screen to see what you're getting on the picture. Now that will just make your eyes go a little bit down or to wherever your, your screen is compared to where the camera lens is. And that could in some cases be enough not to have your picture accepted in certain instances. When you're using the back camera, then you usually won't have that problem because you will have nowhere else to look but into the lens. So those pictures in general, you are looking into the lens. Now, if you have a flash on your device, you could actually use it. It's not the most flattering light. It will not make you look the best, but it is sufficient to make your picture acceptable. The next part would be the lighting. On the ID photo, it makes tons of difference. If a window is your only source of light, then you will actually be having to face the window. You should be looking out the window and you should be holding the camera in front of you or having somebody else do it. Face the window, look out the window and take the picture in that direction. And if you don't have something white or bright or plain behind you, hang something up there in one way or the other. It will just make it so much easier. If you do choose to use artificial light, like a table lamp or something like that, be sure to have it as close as the camera as possible. So it's not on the side, either to the right or to the left. And preferably, even if you have two lamps, put one on each side as close as the camera as possible, and you will have a flood of even light coming to your face. Just try to make sure that the lamps are about the same effect. So you don't have one outdoing the other one too much. And as I mentioned earlier, you can use the flash. That will give you a guaranteed straightforward uh, lighting. Most countries will have a requirement for you to be as neutral as possible on your picture. That means you shouldn't be showing too much emotions on one way or the other. That means you shouldn't be looking too happy or you're too angry or anything. You should just be as neutral as possible. Thank you for watching my channel. My aim is to enhance your skills in a way that they will matter, not only for you, but also for others. I have had the benefit and the privilege of doing this, and it's been an amazing ride. I want to share this with you. If you believe that your skills can make some difference for others, and that will also enhance your well-being, then you're in the right place. Remember, make your skills matter.